<laughs> well, I'm very disappointed in Mike, as a lot of people are, and uh, he is uh, he just very greatly disappointed me. He had a great opportunity, and all he had to do is send it back to the legislatures, let them decide. Because when you had all of that ammunition, when you had all of those things being said about the election, and you had all of the proof that Peter Navarro and others, many others, were talking about, it would have been very easy to send it back and have them come back. So I'm very disappointed at what uh, at the stance he took. So that is Donald Trump uh, saying much of the same thing that he has said for some time, that he believes that uh, Mike Pence could have and had an obligation to uh, just decide, I don't like how the 2020 election went. So we're just gonna do it a different way that we think we can win. It's not true, it's never been true. But now that same argument is being deployed against Mike Pence for a very particular reason. And that is that uh, Mike Pence was asked about whether he would rule out running against Mr. Trump if Trump ran in the 2020 primary. And uh, Pence said, we'll go where we're called. That's the way Karen and I have always approached these things. So he didn't rule it out. And as we were talking about in our production meeting this morning with uh, Brett Ehrlich, that's he's not saying he's definitely gonna run or he's actively thinking about it. It is true that he hasn't ruled it out, but I imagine yeah, if he runs, Trump is gonna have a big problem with it. He would have even if not for the election fraud thing. But if Pence runs, I, I assume that there is gonna be a very significant percentage of the Republican Party that believes that Mike Pence unilaterally handed the presidency to Biden. And that's gonna be something that I think would hurt him in a Republican primary, what do you think? I wonder if it's gonna stretch that far, if it's gonna get to the point of 2024 and if they're still gonna be on this. It's gonna depend on what happens in 22. And then how often, how much of his Donald Trump's uh, endorsed candidates that have been pushing this constant 2020 election fraud lie, uh, if they've had some success, and then if that's gonna spring up. I mean, because there's talk always about how Trump has may have lost a little bit of a grip on the party and constant with this drumbeat of election fraud, election fraud. And if it sticks, then it also sticks to Pence. If it doesn't stick, then it doesn't stick. Well, I think it's gonna come off of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Look, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more likely to sort of irk Trump. Uh, Biden had said that he gets uh, people thanking him as he travels around for not going <laughs> along with what Trump did. Again, like, don't attack him too much, but don't thank him too much either. He could not have overturned the election. I cannot be clearer about that. But he says, I've been moving, uh, traveling around the country, how much people have uh, made a point to express appreciation. It's been very humbling to me. And so he's getting thanked. I would like to thank him for in that previous quote, uh, referring to his wife as Karen rather than mother. Thank you for that. Um, but anyway, I do wanna let you know a little bit of how this thing might go. Uh, here is one of the more recent polls. It's still from a bit ago, but if you were to support a candidate, who would it be? Or would you consider voting for these people? So like, it doesn't add up to 100 necessarily. Um, but Trump is the favorite in that. At this point, more people have been interested in Pence than DeSantis. I have a feeling that that is not what we're gonna be seeing once the real polling gets going. Um, but anyway, uh, I wanna just get to a little bit more of the video. Can we jump to the third video that we have here? So the last one, uh, there's a claim made about what Pence did that I think, again, you're gonna hear a lot of if they go against each other. That the worst thing Mike Pence did to you on January 6th is not share that fake legal opinion he had with either you or Pat Cipollone, the White House legal counsel. He had a duty to you, sir, as commander in chief, he had a duty to this country. He had a duty to the people of America to show that flawed legal opinion. He did not do that. Instead, he stuck the knife, not in your back, but in your chest. And for that, nobody in this country should consider Mike Pence to be anything other than but retired. <laughs> okay, so all of those guys, whatever they are, all believe or at least pretend to believe that Pence could have just made Trump president. Not a single one of those, as we've made the point many times over the past years, not a single one of those men think that if people vote for Trump in 2024, none of them think that Kamala Harris can just overturn the results of the election. But they do think that the other person who was VP could, JR. They don't believe it, but they would like for the people who are gonna vote to believe it. That's all that matters here. Uh, whatever these folks believe, we never know because there's absolutely zero principles. They go whichever way the power goes, whichever way they can position themselves to get in the power. One of those people's Mike Pence. That's why he even chose the position he took. That's why the entire time Trump was president, 
he'd stand behind him and gaze at the back of his head as if it was a, a romance novel. That they're trying to ban at Barnes and Noble. It's one of those things <laughs> where he's just trying to constantly do these things to get himself in his position. And now that he has, or he thinks he has, the Trump folks are all over him. Like, wait a second, this guy thinks he's gonna use his position and actually get gain something else from it within the party. What is he, a politician? No, nothing else exists except for Donald Trump. If you cross him in any kind of way, it's over. By the way, he said, Pence said that, I'm sorry, Navarro said that Pence stuck the knife, not in your back, Mr. President, sir, 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 President, but in your chest. Man, Donald Trump sounds like a horrible fighter. How am I gonna walk up with a knife and stab you in the chest? And you don't do anything about it. You're a loser, exactly. man, you're bleeding and out. That's true. Isn't it better that he stabbed him in the chest? Like that's face to face. I don't think that your metaphor is accomplishing the, the <laughs> what you wanted it to. Navarro needs anyway. to read more books. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're already in trouble for this much much discussion about how exactly you'd go about stabbing Trump. <laughs> to be clear, I don't want Trump to be stabbed. I want him to go naturally as a result of the choices he's made through his life. <laughs> anyway, that dude loves filet o fish. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.